be asking you questions and I'm going to be waiting <laughs> for you to reply. <laughs> so um, it could be a long wait if you're just going to be quiet out there. <laughs> Um, because I really want um, to have a lot of fun with this, um, you know, send hearts, little thumbs up, so that I know you got it. Now, lastly, the hashtag we're going to use for the next five days is hashtag reach millions. Um, this, if you can, uh, when you're going to be sharing right there, uh, any of these, or within your social media, um, you know, just include that in the post uh, so that I can kind of track and monitor our activity. Now, today, before I lunge into the lesson, I'm just going to do a really um, a tiny bit of history or backstory about me. Um, I became an entrepreneur in 1985 at the age of 19 when I started a software company. Um, I was an early adopter in 1992 of the internet, and that's why I'm incredibly so passionate about it. I have seen every permeation of what goes on um, online. Um, and, you know, back then I was doing work for um, the government, Walmart, JCPenney, the Lottery Corporation, banks, and Fortune 500. I became actually the youngest woman to sit on the Board of Governors um, at the age of 24, for the Certified Management Accountant Society, and that was after getting my designation. I then went on to be the first woman to win New Internet Marketing Success of the Year in 2006, and then I was the first woman to get picked up by the World Internet Summit, the largest speaking organization of the time, where I traveled the world speaking on stages um, of up to 9,000 attendees, <laughs> and I was the one woman with 15 men. And then I was also pursued and am an Amazon and LinkedIn influencer. Now, what I learned though on those stages, whether you realize it or not, is that you have a brand, so you can either, either be cause over it um, or you can become the effect of it. Now, one day I realized I became the effect of it when I let a group of men determine what my brand was. Um, and that was the day I knew the importance of establishing your own voice and identity and by creating a brand position because someone is always talking about you and someone else is listening. So for 35 years now, I've been helping business owners identify the gaps in your business uh, where we clearly establish your unique selling proposition, we get clarity in your message, your brand, to create an online presence that speaks directly to your target market, all right? Then we can also take a look at developing programs and pricing that increase your bottom line, create systems that streamline the sales and the communication progress. Um, we're gonna align with social media messaging so you can say more with less and improve your return on investment and conversion rates. So you can focus on what you love to do while your marketing and technology is taken care of. So that was a, a big way for me to say it, but I really wanted you to get an overview of, um, in general, what my focus is for a client. I'm almost um, a soup to nuts person. So um, over the course of the next five days, we are going to cover define your audience, choose your colors, taglines, logos, and then the alignment of your brand. Now, before we jump into audience, though, um, I first want to get some clarity around branding, um, just to make sure that as you move forward, you again have a little bit of understanding on that. The truth today is if you want to be seen, you have to be branded. If you want to be heard, you have to be branded in order to be remembered. Okay, interaction is about to begin. Here we go. So. Branding is the perception of people and what sticks in their mind and helps them make buying decisions. So, who's this? I think everybody will uh, recognize this man. And I want you to be thinking at the same time as you're going to be telling me who that is. I want you to also tell me what are elements of his brand? Exactly, very well done. Everyone said Richard Branson. Um, so what are elements of his brand? Exactly. He's Virgin Airlines. Uh, he's very philanthropic. Yes. 
Um, yes, he's good looking. He's fun. Doesn't he make it look like, uh, yeah, he's got some big bucks in his pockets. Very good. Um, that's exactly right. And you see, uh, yes, he has hundreds of businesses. And so you see that what starts to happen is, yes, he established Virgin as his brand, but a lot of other things start to come under him. And that's why your brand is actually all encompassing. Okay, our next, the goddess of branding, who is this? <clears throat> yes, yes, very well done. I mean, so obvious, I know, but um, really, um, isn't that a brilliant place to be when it comes to your branding? And this is actually why, why personal branding is so effective. Um, as far as that's concerned. And so what are parts of Oprah's brand, right? What are some pieces uh, that you know? Yes, she, uh, somebody put books and that's correct. She actually has that golden touch, right? If you um, used to go on her show um, and you had a book, boom, you're, you're like number one New York Times bestseller. Yes, she has the magazine, she has the network now, Soul Sunday, one of my one of my favorite shows. Yes, she focuses on whole person wellness. Really nice. Good job, Noel and Joseph and Shana and Christy. Uh, weight loss. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. She's she's she has struggled her entire life really um, with her own weight, and as a result, what a great way to leverage something that you're going through, right? She connected to weight loss programs. Um, and now she's, you know, uh, attempting to lose weight in front of everybody. That's a really daring thing to do. And yes, she is a motivator of the masses. Um, uh, what I loved about um, Oprah uh, particular was she was the first one to talk about spirituality in daytime television. And she really started to move people from being the couch potato in a way to thinking more about um, uh, some of the actions that you take and what are the effects of those. And yes, she's incredibly inspirational. So it comes down to what are people really buying online? The answer is you. And that's why it's, it's very important that you take a look at this from a 360 degree viewpoint. Okay, so what is the number one mistake uh, that people make? Um, when it comes to branding. Can anybody uh, maybe take a guess at that? It's, uh, it's really funny because it's incredibly obvious. Okay, so the answer to that one is thinking you don't need a brand. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a key element and, and I'll tell you why. Historically, um, branders, you know, big companies, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Disney, um, Nike, um, all of the big boys that had the big marketing and advertising budget, they were the ones spending a lot of money on branding, right? Um, but what's interesting, though, is as you see through the decades of the actions that they took to embed the brand in your mind, look where we are today they are nationally internationally and globally known from in case of nike a swoosh you see that swoosh anywhere you're like well, nike right um and that's key to to kind of your evolution and how you want to move into the marketplace um and what has happened though is television did exclude us all from being branders, right? From, from the importance of us kind of having to market and brand our company. With the internet, that created a level playing field, but more importantly, because we're all there, now we have to be heard above the noise of like seven billion people. And uh, in essence, there's only one way to kind of keep rising to the top, and that is kind of uh, brand clarity. So what are some of the benefits of branding? Um, a steady stream of ideal clients, association with a market niche, uh, greater credibility, recognition and prestige, 
and higher perceived value. I think the biggest one there is higher perceived value. When somebody really starts to recognize um, uh, the consistency and the messaging um, of what you do, that there, that then leads to the steady stream of clients, right? And that leads to the greater credibility and then that leads to the recognition and, and ultimately prestige. Exactly, so you were correct, uh, Noelle, in, in, in the lack of branding <laughs> was her answer. Okay, now, think and grow rich. Put it in the chat, how many of you have read this book? Because personal branding and self-positioning and all individual branding by whatever name was first introduced in 1937 in the book, Think and Grow Rich. Great book. If you haven't read it, go and, find, go and get it. I think you can literally get it for 99 cents on Amazon. It's again, it's like the book, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. That was written in 1910. Another classic book that really starts to help with the mindset of money. Again, both those books, 99 cents, I'm sure, in Kindle. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Okie doke. Very good. Okay. So let me tell you, with effective branding, you can market anything. Tell me if you remember the pet rock. How many, how many agers do we have on here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good, Christy. <laughs> mm hmm Yep, that's correct, correct. Good job. I mean, can you just imagine you're walking along the beach and you see a rock and you think, I know. What if? I put it in a box with a little bit of straw and uh, call it a pet rock. And, and the number of people that would have said to this guy, you're insane, nobody's going to buy a rock. And in fact, he sold $15 million of this rock in six months. And so it kind of goes to, in this case, he had to add packaging, right? But um, it just goes to the simplicity. He didn't even put a face on it. There wasn't even effort. Rock, throw it in the box, done, good to go, you know? And how many um, of us really needed a Chia Brittany, a Chia Pet of any uh, sort uh, whatsoever? And again, this brand consistently makes $8 million a year, and you can imagine the majority of their sales come in November and December when they push this thing as that crappy, sucky stuffer. Okay, so there you go. So doesn't it seem fair, unfair or fair, whichever way you want to look at it then, that, that your amazing product and service get into the marketplace and gets the attention that it deserves? Put in the chat box if you are ready for that to happen for you. You're like, yep, I'm ready that my brand gets out there. Very good. <laughs> okay, good. Love it, love it. Thank you. Thank you. And again, if you are in the Facebook community, hearts and thumbs up and, you know, just keep those coming. Even after, I'm going to be watching this and, and helping you through your questions. Nice. Okay. So here it is. Your task um, is to make sure that you stand out and stand up above the crowd okay so that's the important piece for you to look at now the more you brand well the less you need to sell so let's take a look now this is where each day is normally going to commence okay kind of day one and day two etc so the first thing we're taking a look at today is the all-important audience this is who is your tar target market so before I even begin and explain all of the details I want to see now where you kind of are. So type in the chat or uh, in the comments of Facebook, um, who are you marketing to right now? Okay, so um, kind of what are the type of uh, people that need and buy your goods and services? Okay, some people say you're still working it out. Great, that's why you're here, right? Okay, okay, so. Small business owners, and we're going to get to this, way too generic, okay? So we're going to, we're going to start to move through some of the, the key elements. 
uh, we're a not-for-profit and we have clients for our free services, but we need funders, donors, volunteers. Correct. When you're in a position like that, you actually have four different kind of target markets. And so that's where it's important to have the overall encompassing brand. And then you're going to have your subcategories. And what happens there is when you market to them, you keep them channeled, right? And so in the case of a website, they'd actually be going to a specific page on your website and things of that nature. People who are interested in patient advocacy for their health care. Um, and so you need to, one of the things I'm going to tell you is you have to speak um, English. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you have to speak to an eight-year-old. Um, and so be very, very simple in your languaging and come up with um, something specific um, like, um, and again, I don't know what this would be, but getting closer would be things like um, I help, um, I help uh, parents deal with their aging or, I, you know, I help uh, baby boomers deal with their aging parents, things of that nature. Okay. That's right. Partners, collaborators, they're all different. Okay. So. Let's, let's start in on this. So a target market is the market you choose to serve. And notice I use the word choose, because whether you want to or not, you're going to need to do that. Gone are the days where you can be broad and generic. What's more, if you answered things like, we, tar you know, we target everybody, we can serve everybody, we cater to a wide range of people, um, that is really just a... Um, um, a recipe for disasters. So again, petite females who like dressy clothes, that gets more, um, that gets closer, right? But one of the things at that point, you might say petite women, you know, aged 40 and up because clothes are different for millennials than they are for older people um, who like to dress in brands such as Chanel, Prada, Gucci, you know, that is, starts to be a very specific brand. And then you know who to focus on. And then those keywords um, start to pop for people. Oh, we help baby boomers care for their aging parents. Uh, <laughs> it was just confirmed that whatever the heck I said there um, was what she did. That's an important thing to remember is you have to speak to um, a very low gradient of um, H. <laughs> so very good. <laughs> um, alrighty, so um, if you target everyone, you're actually targeting no one, and you can't be all things to all people. So when you're in front of someone, you can cater that conversation to them, right? You can watch their indicators, you can, you know, you can say, I cater to you, or I cater to, um, uh, men aged 45 who are professional, well-dressed, you, you can actually tailor it 100% to the guy you're looking at. So in his head, he's going tick, 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 right? But the problem is, is on the internet, you have no ability to discern unless you get specific first. So your web copy, your articles, your keywords, your pain points, colors, everything has to speak to them um, or they won't connect. And even more hazardous, is you actually only have three seconds to do it. So these are the type of people we need to be attracting and the major reason why we're doing this, right? We need people to buy, look at, consume, and recommend our products. All right, so the key is to know your target audience. Now, defining your target market is one of the most important facts, in fact, it's the foundation of all elements of your marketing strategy, from how you develop your name, your products, your services, right through to the marketing channels you choose to promote them. Now, to cut through the noise, you need to create product services and marketing campaigns for a specific, well-defined group of people. So your task is to define your target market and to identify and understand your particular niche so that you can um, kind of dominate, right? So the better you understand them, the better you'll be able to provide them exactly with what they're looking for content-wise, okay, messaging, advertisements that you start to do. You are better to go nine feet deep uh, with your messaging um, rather than five feet wide, okay? 
Um, and, and in fact, the deeper you go, uh, you're going to start to see higher conversion rates and a better return on your investment. And as you start to uh, take a look at the metrics, um, that's going to become really important to you. But what I'm going to recommend here is as we go through today's lesson, I'm going to ask you just to identify some very specific things even though there's a lot you can identify with a target market, we're just going to go on the upper level. Because what starts to happen is as you move through the evolution and understanding of your target market and brand, you start to learn more about them and that's where you can fill in the blanks. Okay. Now, because um, everything online is filtered through the God of Google, <laughs> When we aren't clear on who we are and what we can do for someone, they will actually ignore you. So keywords are your answer to attracting your ideal client um, and you won't know what they are unless you know who that is, all right? So this isn't a chicken and egg. This is pick the chicken and get him to lay the egg, okay? <laughs> um, to help you decide, you need to ask yourself, two key questions. So the first question is, what problem do you solve? Okay, so this is something you're going to um, sit with, right? And then, you know, do you help um, uh, somebody from the overwhelm in their office? Do you help them declutter at home? Um, things of that nature. Do you help people with relationships? You know, so you want to identify the problem that you're solving. And then the other option you can look at is what is the desire that you fulfill? Okay, so this comes to the pain and the passion. Um, so for example, um, if you deal with anything to do with pets, that's passion. People are extremely passionate about their pets and they're always desiring to uh, treat them better, get them great food, help them, love them, right? Another um, industry that's similar for that is the beauty industry, right? People want to look better, smell better, feel better, whatever it is, right? And so what's interesting here is um, pain, when you focus on a pain or a problem that you resolve, then um, that actually sells quick. But if you're focusing on a passion um, that has extreme longevity, and so um, you, th those, either you fit one or the other in, in, in general, right? In, in my case, you know, um, as somebody who deals with um, uh, businesses, I'm generally helping them to solve pain, right? Um, but if you were somebody who dealt with, uh, um, you, were, you were somebody who dealt with pain, the actual curing of pain, um, uh, I had one client that we went all in on golf. And so that is a nice tight niche. And the beautiful part about that is it hits both because we went to the desire, right? That golfer who is extremely active um, and wants to have a better golf game and God knows they'll spend $500 on one club um, you have a, a, a very rabid audience there. Um, and so if you are saying to them, I can help the pain of your swing, I can help you rotate your hips further, anything of that nature, then um, that will help you to uh, really be able to identify um, and help them on both sides of the uh, coin, so to speak. Now, we're going to take a look at um, some elements here. A target market is the specific group of people you wanna reach with your targeting message. Now, they are people who are most likely to buy your products and services, right? Um, so the interesting uh, thing here you will often notice is that um, you want to ensure that uh, they are united in um, some of common characteristics. So when it comes to finding your target market, there are four key areas to look at. It's geographical, demographic, psychographic, and behavioral. So we're going to take a look at um, each of these. 
Now, you will notice in each of these, there's a lot of fields, right? Again, I'm gonna have you only identify as part of your exercise, just some key elements. And when you understand why you need to know that, then it will help you, all right? So in um, uh, the case of ge geographical, it comes down to where in the world do your existing customers live, all right? So in addition to understanding the areas to target, um, it actually helps you to figure out what hours are most important for customer service, your sales reps to be online, and most importantly, what time zone are they in? So when you should schedule your ads and posts to ensure best visibility. That's really the key right there, okay? So in my case, I actually have clients that are worldwide. It's why I do a lot of my stuff either at 9 a.m. so that I can ensure that kind of my European market, particularly um, I'm heavy in the UK, they can come on without it being, um, you know, brutally late. Um, and then, um, so those are things to consider. And then when you post, you know, again, if I post in general, I might put my post out around 8 a.m. And then so it catches a bit of the Eastern market and it catches uh, most importantly my uh, Pacific time zone. But it's still enough that the UK market could, um, could catch it too, all right? So geographical can play a large part in their interests, their activities, especially whether they live in the city, the rural or suburbs. Now. Let me know how many people here have ever watched House Hunters International. It's actually one of my favorite shows. <laughs> I love to, uh, I, I love it just for the travel and uh, uh, what they're doing. But if you have noticed, uh, one of the best things uh, about that show is um, one, I always seems to want the city and the hustle and the bustle and the high energy. And the other seems to want country and peace and quiet <laughs> and to be far away from people, okay? So you, you'll you know as you're watching that show, you'll be sitting there going, these guys are doomed, right? <laughs> um, but in marketing, we have to pick. We have to speak to one of them because we don't have them in front of us. We aren't able to negotiate. We aren't able to, to invoke compromise, right? We have to be hardcore. Um, and, and again, you know, once we know and we've identified, then we can come up with the pain points, all right? The next uh, we have to take a look at is demographic. It's a market or segment of the population identified. So the key to when you are starting out is not going too deep um, so that you don't start marketing. You're like, oh my God, uh, education, nationality, religion, you know. These are for later, all right? I'm giving you everything that if you honed in, quite frankly, almost on all of these elements, um, you would have an uber-specific market of rabid buyers. Right now, we are going to go broad, but it's going to be um, narrow enough that you can actually get heard. So in this um, category, there are two mandatory identifiers. The first are the age-based, okay? So, um, and these are based on categories. So if we take a look at who are you marketing to, it comes along these lines. Is it baby boomers? 1946 to 1964, that's actually kind of my target market. Is it Generation X, 1965 to 1979? That's actually my, my, that's the one I exist in. Is it Millennials, Gen Y, you know, Gen Next, which are 1980 to 1994? Or is it Gen Zers, you know, 1995 to 2012? Again, you cannot get this step and say, I appeal to everybody. Um, because when you start to select keywords, when you start to select languaging, and more importantly for your website, when you start to select images, if you're talking to baby boomers, they do not want to see your site full of millennials. It will drive them crazy, okay? 
and vice versa. If a millennial thinks you're targeting them and they come in and all they see is the, you know, the aging population, they're like, this isn't for me. Already, see how I say you only have three seconds? Already, they look, they're gone from an image selection. So imagine, you know, you've got the wrong age or you haven't selected an age. So you're just plunking up stock photos and then you're uh, not saying anything specific to the pains they have. And then you're not using keywords that they are uh, expect to see or, or are going to be using in their searches over on Google, um, how it all starts to collapse. Um, and, and so that's why it's, it's extremely um, necessary for you to uh, hone in on this, okay? Um, next, that you have to select and identify. And I get the most arguments from clients and anybody in my midst <laughs> um, that they are not going to pick a gender. I can sell to men and women equally. I get that. So can I. But guess what? Um, what color are you going to make your site then? You know, it's kind of like guessing what the baby is before it's born, right? Oh, I'll paint it yellow, right? And then when the baby's born and it's a boy, you're like all in on blue, right? So it's why you need to know um, because then your choices start to get dictated by, by that. And that helps your market relate to you, okay? We are honed and conditioned um, on a lot of various factors. And if these aren't um, um, kind of apparent, they're, they're just gonna abandon you. So um, again, male or female. Um, now the other, the little um, side to this, if you want, is you can pick a community. And then later, you can maybe go in harder, such as let's say you, you, you have something for keto diets, right? The hot thing right now. Okay, you can actually select keto diets and you don't have to go men or women within that because the community is so tight and specific in of itself. It's easy to go find people who are in the keto community. They're everywhere. And this is the whole reason we need to identify, right? Because Quite frankly, when it comes to men and women, when you're writing things, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Men like facts and figures, women buy on emotion. They also have very different problems, pain points, and passions. So it's extremely hard to um, cross. Uh, so how many people here know uh, or ha are going all in on a gender? I know Noelle will go all in on a gender. And, and hers is a little more obvious because she deals with clothes. Okay, so um, okay, so here's the thing. If your answer is sitting in the no, um, um, then um, you're going to find it difficult to penetrate the marketplace, if not almost impossible. Um, again, nonprofits have a little bit of a different thing here, but I can also tell you if I dealt with a nonprofit that dealt with animals, I would go all in on women. I tell you, women will do anything for an animal. They will bend over backwards. Men are good. Men are kind, but it, it's emotion. Pets and animals invoke emotion my site would be geared towards them. Will men come? Are we trying to exclude men? No. What we're trying to do is get heard above the 10,000 other organizations that maybe deal with animals or, or, or that deal with what we have, right? Um, and and in, in the case of maybe what you do, Joseph, honestly, if I was a guy, I would probably go after men. Unless, Every woman falls in love with you when they meet you, and you could swoon the women um, through your personality and through your um, abilities, of course, then heck, go in on women, okay? Um, alrighty, so that is that element. So let's take a look, starting to hone it in tighter. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
so uh, if and here's an interesting thing if you find you're in groups of men women whichever it is it means you've already had some sort of gravitational pull to a market and then go all in okay it's not that let's say you're a guy marketing to women go all in they're going to want that all right they don't need you to be wishy-washy they don't need you especially women they don't want you half-assed into their market. They don't want you half-assed serving them. They want you all in. If you're going to serve them, serve them well. All right? <clears throat> Okie doke. Um, next is psychographic. Okay? This is the study and classification of people according to their ap attitudes, aspirations, um, and, it, and it especially connects to market research. You know, so... Let's take a look at just attitude. I want you to put into, again, the comments or into the chat area. Um, if you recall, if we're talking, say, Gen Z, Gen Z, right? What is their general attitude toward continuing education or college? If you know anybody in that marketplace, any, um, any people, nieces, nephews, kids, whatever, put what their uh, general attitude towards continuing education is out there. Anybody? <laughs> Correct, nice one. So Shana says they seem empowered to just be able to start something. Exactly. Uh, and so this is interesting. So if your answer is like, I have no idea, that, that could be okay for two reasons. One is they're simply not on your target at all, and that's an okay thing. Um, um, or you need to get to know what their attitudes are, especially when you pick a target market. When you start to do this and you go in, um, you need to know things like their attitudes. So in general, okay, their attitude toward continuing education is that they don't need it. That's a, a generality, but they are the starters. They're like, I'm just going to figure out what I like to do, and I'm going to do it. We can see that already because um, uh, they have um, information, and they just like all of a sudden point a camera at themselves and start talking about it, <laughs> you know, and they become experts as they move along <laughs> you know you see a lot of people like are passionate a lot of uh, of them might be passionate about makeup or people are passionate about um, playing Grand Theft Auto you know um, and they can turn it by going on to YouTube and they can turn that into a million dollar business there is an eight-year-old kid making eight million dollars a year on YouTube um, uh, you know from uh, reviewing toys there are, there are you can see tons of teens online instagram and youtube in particular you know and they're, and they're just screaming through it um su successfully making money doing what they love to talk about um and then if we take a look at the attitude of a baby boomer what do they think about college so post that you might maybe know that one a little better <laughs> Now, um, when it comes to this one, um, you yeah, have the YouTube everything, exactly. Um, so when it comes to baby boomers in general, you remember the age and time we were all brought up. Our almost mandate, in a way, you know, providing the, the, the funderability was there, was you need to go to college so you can get a job. That's their attitude, right? The millennials, the, the Gen Zers, they're breaking all of that down right now. But it's still a battle, right? Because you have the parents who are saying, got to go to college. And you've got the millennials and Gen Zers saying, no, I'll just figure this out. It's okay. Um, and quite frankly, they're figuring it out way better <laughs> than if they'd have burned uh, through four years of college or university built up on average $135,000 in unforgivable debt and had to take a job 
that they hate in order to pay down the debt. So it's very interesting, those attitudes that have been formulating and things that have become apparent. Okay? Um, yes. <clears throat> Yes, college isn't vital, could have helped. It, it, it depends, right? Um, sometimes college is, is merely good for discipline or it can be disastrous for discipline. I mean, it all depends on what they, you know, what they want to do and the direction they want to take. So, um, but the, the key to understand here is in general, what, uh, what are their attitudes? What things do they value? What are their interests? Lifestyle, um, you know, type of thing. Um, and so do you recommend places to find this information? So one of the um, later, as you, as you start to refine um, more, you'll be able to um, leverage tools on like Facebook as you're doing ads where you can select and it, they will answer this for you. But in general, social media is going to be a good um, arena for you to start to search. And I'll, I'll point out some things um, in, in just a minute, some links that will help you out. All righty. So um, that's it. You can see, though, uh, uh, Gen Z, millennials are like, maybe I have to go to college, maybe I don't. Baby boomers were like, if you don't go to college, you won't get a job, right? And the, the landscape has changed that has produces also that shift in the attitude in that now kids can go on the internet, they can start up a company and boom, um, they're, you know, they've got something going on. I know this one kid, he's 20 years old. He already books five speaking gigs a month. Right. Um, and he didn't, he didn't go to college for that. <laughs> right. He just started to talk about what he was passionate about, which was overcoming fear and boom, you know, he, he uh, caught on through YouTube. All right. And then last but not least is behavioral. Okay. This is a manner of behaving or acting pertaining to reactions um, uh, based on social stimuli and then a response to that. Okay. So again, if we take a look at, let's take a look at the way people buy because that's a really important thing. When you have picked your target market, you have to now identify how do people buy? Okay, so in general, take a look at baby boomers. Um, what are some of the some of the buying habits of a baby boomer? How do they buy stuff? <clears throat> okay. Yes, there it is. Shop physically. Baby boomers still go to stores. They still go to malls. But are we seeing that it's getting quieter and quieter and quieter? Yes, <laughs> because it's a really funny thing that's starting to occur is once they get and move out of that baby boomer stage to become in the what's called active agers stage, right? The seniors category um, that uh, they actually move back into, of course, what what Gen Zers and Millennials and the only way they shop, right? They, they, they pick up their phone <laughs> and they click and they go, right? And they buy. And so that's why if you're dealing with that demographic, you better practically have one click buy, right? You cannot make them search, wait, look. Um, if you take a look at someone like Marie Forleo, who is targeting uh, that particular generation, you know, she deals in, you know, hundred dollar products and click to buy right boom 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 you're in um, and that's that's she understands how they buy okay and so it's important to remember that okay you can start to really see when you take a look at the differences of particularly if you're going to compare compare baby boomers to to Gen Zers and Millennials, you can you'll start to see the importance of targeting. Now, once you've come with the key identifiers, then you're going to start to declare it, right? You're going to you're going to create your positioning statement. Our target market is gender, aged, age range, who live in place or type of place, and like to, 
all right? This is going to be a part of your little exercise for tonight. And again, you're going to get an exercise sheet that goes directly to your inbox um, if you've registered, all right? Um, and you're gonna go nice and simple. So in my case, my target market is baby boomers. Generally, they kind of live in the suburbs. Um, and um, then they are women, my gender is women. And uh, you know, what are they interested in? What type of activities? They're entrepreneurs, they're business people, they network, they, they like to travel, they like to get on stages. Um, they have a relatively good income and they are seeking the freedom lifestyle. So these are things that I start to uh, market towards, all right? Now, this is real important because a confused buyer never buys. You don't got buyers, it means they're confused. And if you meet your market expectations, that's how you will create rabid, hungry fans eager to buy what you have. All right, so the exercise is going to be in your inbox for those who registered. If you did not register, just go to fbchallenge.live and um, it's going to be right there, okay? So you're gonna have this to help you out. Here's the things I want you to do and I kept it nice and simple, all right? The first question you're gonna answer is, who don't you want to serve, all right? Sometimes this is easier been coming up with who do you want to serve, all right? So for example, who don't I want to serve? I actually won't do the CBD marketplace. I won't do anything in the drug industry. Um, you know, uh, if cigarettes were around, I wouldn't do cigarettes, you know? So there's probably things you can quickly say like, nope, 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 all right? It helps to get you more relaxed about now selecting your identifiers. And then again, you're gonna come up with this statement and then three places there that you can find these. The reason you need to know who you're going after is you can then start to say and find out where are my guys hanging out, okay? So uh, these are just some links, Facebook. Um, these are uh, demographics for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And so if you click on these, it will start to break down um, the details of that. Now, for simplicity, uh, you can just go to hootsuite.com and, and look for um, uh, their, their key uh, identi identifiers. Um, I can, I wonder if I can, oop, tell you what, let me, I will put these see if I can grab these for you. Okay, and then 